Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday, the episode of the week where we talk about all things Bolt action. And today guys we are going to be talking about conscript armies in Bolt action. For those of you that have followed my channel for a long time, you will know that I love a good conscript army. I'm an Imperial Guard player over in Warhammer 40k and my favourite unit in the Imperial Guard is the humble conscript. Waves after waves of infantry being thrown at the enemy and so it's only right that I do a conscript video for one of my new favourite games which is Bolt Action. So today guys what I'm going to do is go through what I believe to be in my opinion and then of course there's always dissenting opinions which must be dealt with but no there's always there's always things that i don't know about this game i'm very much new to action but these are the three armies that i'm aware of that are the best ones for running if you want to run a big infantry horde you want a big conscript army so without further ado let's dive straight into today's video now the first faction that I want to talk about, and I mean it has to be this guys, the Soviet Union. I mean we've all seen the film Enemy at the Gates, and if you haven't, what are you doing with your life? Go and watch it right now. We've all seen that classic scene where one man gets a rifle, one man gets the bullets, when the man with the rifle dies, the man following him picks up the rifle and shoots. We've all seen that amazing scene in the film. And the Soviet Union really leans into that as well. And you've got to remember, bot action, a lot of it is meant to be less historically accurate, a little bit more Hollywoody, and that's why I like it. It's a bit more arcade, it's a bit more fun. And so the Soviet Union get a number of traits that really, a number of options that really make conscripts for them good. So the first thing to say is they get a free unit of conscripts, totally free, in addition to all of their other units, they get a free unit of conscripts and this is really really big because it means that the soviets pretty much always outnumber their opponents and it's just great to get a free unit and it's a free 12 man squad it's really good and they've got the green rules so when one of them dies they might even become regular and if you get a free 12 man regular squad yeah sure they've only got rifles but that doesn't matter it means that you're always likely to outnumber your opponent you know for example in my german army i've got about 35 infantry total and then the soviet player comes along and says, oh yeah i get 33 percent of your total infantry for free on top of everything else I have never played a game against Soviets where I haven't been outnumbered. Never. Even if they're not running like a full green tide or should say red army tide, you know, I sort of thinking green for like the green helmets, you know. They're not if you're not running a full tide of concert, it doesn't matter. I still seem to find myself just outnumbered by the Soviets. And I tend to find it's really I tend to find I'm just killing the Soviets, killing them and killing them and killing them, and yet they just keep coming back with more and more men. And the number of games I have lost to Soviets. Soviets are one of my most difficult armies for me to face. I never seem to be able to beat them very easily at all. And the number of games that I have lost simply because my opponent has just, just had that extra wave, that extra force, you know, when, when we've been clashing in the middle of the board and I and it's, it's neck and neck and neck and neck and then suddenly these 12 beautiful bastards, these 12 concerts come over the hill and they just swing it and it just seems like the Soviets with these extra bodies, they always seem to be able to absorb casualties. They always seem to be able to push harder. And so, yeah, Soviets getting that free con squad is really, really big. And I just, I don't think it can be stated enough. Especially when you go to something like an event where you're likely to find like a dice limit, like a one platoon limit. And so, for example, how I run my events is it's a 12 dice limit, not including free units. So that means that Soviets tend to get like everyone else is running like 12 dice and the Soviet players run like 13 that means he's got a little dice advantage it's just so big and the best bit is that that's not even it I mean that alone would make Soviets like a fantastic conscript sort of army but the fact that I mean and when you think about it before we before so the second thing I just want to say if you decide to go full Soviet tied full red army tied you could take 12 you could take six squads including your free squads six squads of 12 conscript riflemen and I'm sh I think there are even bigger units they can take like that I think they can genuinely take squads where only one in every two men has rifles and they're really really cheap they but they're like shirkers or something crazy but if you're just if you're not going down that route you're just like I want to have at least units that can do something then the Soviets can turn up with six squads of like 12 conscripts and that's massive that's like 72 infantry that is massive and that is you'll outnumber every opponent two to one some opponents you will outnumber almost three to one it's just massive and when you think about it like that's not even going to cost them that many points that's like what like 84 points a squad 
you take like six of those squads, it's like roughly like roughly 500-ish points. You still got plenty, and that's like six dice as well. You still got plenty of options for your light artillery, for your anti-tank rifles, for your officers, for your tanks, for your armored cars. You, you, you're barely scratching the surface with that. So the full red tide is certainly something that you can do with the Soviets. And it's a really cool army as well. It's a very Hollywood army as well, which is always nice to use. Now, another thing that makes Soviets really, really good with uh, conscripts is that they have two other national sort of traits that they can get. The first one is Order 227, where every time a morale check is failed for the first time, you get to re-roll it. Now, that's really, really big because it basically counters one of the problems you have with conscripts, which is they run away. Or, you know, they don't like doing what, what they're told. So it's really good that you've got this inbuilt thing of being able to help deal with morale. I mean, of course, it doesn't help. You know, it's not like you auto pass, but it helps. Another thing that you get is access to really cheap officers. So you can take like a really cheap, inexperienced officer, which a lot of other factions can't take inexperienced officers. They have to take regular or higher. And so that means like you can get your leadership buffs. You know, which is good because concepts only have leadership 8, so you want to be able to put them on leadership 9 or 10 with an officer. And you can do that for cheaper than any other faction. So that's another good thing to take into account. Now, last thing on the service, but certainly not least, is that their ability to take commissars. Now, commissars are a unique Soviet unit. And what they do is basically they get rid of one of the biggest disadvantages that inexperienced infantry have which they have a permanently inbuilt minus one to hit the enemy not minus one to be hit that would be amazing uh minus one to hit the enemy so everyone else in bot action starts off on threes and basically in when it comes to hitting the enemy then you add on you to hit modifiers like light cover rage all that kind of stuff inexperienced infantry always have that minus one always have a minus one which means they actually start off on fours so if you look at your Soviet infantry, it's like, okay, I'm hitting on fours and then I'm moving. So now I'm hitting on fives. I'm at long range. Now I'm hitting on sixes. And oh, my opponent's in even a smidge of light cover. Six followed by sixes. And there's a huge difference between hitting someone on just sixes and hitting someone on sixes followed by sixes. Commissars, and bear in mind, Soviets can take, you know, get access to like, they get to two commissars. They get like the front nick uh, Stalingrad commissars and they get access to regular old commissars. And basically both of those, and, and then they're really cheap as well, don't forget, both of those have an ability where if you're within six inches of them, you ignore that minus one to hit with your conscript. It's massive. Now, of course, your commissar can be sniped out. This isn't 40k. There's no lookout, sir, or anything like that. You can just get, they can just get killed. But it's still a really, really nice big buff. And I think it's probably what makes Soviets have some of the best conscript armies in the game is that they, yeah, they die like shit, but... In theory, you've taken six squads of these things. Two of them statistically should uprate to regular, so suddenly it's not like you're taking all conscripts. If you're lucky, more than that will uprate to regular. And even if they don't, you're only dying badly if you've got a cheap officer nearby, you're on leadership 10 anyway. And then your, your commissars mean that you're not you know, hitting badly. It just means you get to counter a lot of the disadvantages of being a conscript. The only one you can't really counter is the whole, you know, being killed on threes, but you can you can sort of pseudo get rid of all the other problems that inexperienced infantry have. And so that's why I think Soviets are probably one of the strongest factions when it comes to running big conscript armies, which, like we said at the beginning of the video, feels right, doesn't it? Like, it, Soviets should be overwhelming their enemies in bodies and bodies of conscripts. That's just, that's how they were, right? I mean, probably not historically, but, you know, that's how Hollywood portrayed them, and by God, I want to recreate that enemy of the gate scene. So, the first faction service, and I think you can agree, they start, they start off the conscript army strong. But let's take a look at another really strong conscript, really strong, inexperienced army, the Japanese. The Imperial Japanese Army in bot action was already a really, really strong infantry force. Nearly all of their good rules are focused around their infantry, although they do get some very affordable armour. It's the infantryman's game, especially for the Japanese. And so when you combine that with the fact that they get access to, to some of the most affordable and effective inexperienced infantry in the game, it makes you realise how powerful they are. In fact, the Japanese, when it comes to their conscript armies, actually have one of the cheesiest builds available, which we're going to go into. We're going to cover it briefly now. So what makes the Japanese so good? Well, we've already covered that, you know, 
inexperienced infantry, they can't hit very well, they've got poor leadership, but that doesn't really matter to the Japanese for two reasons. Firstly, the Japanese don't care about shooting you. The Japanese want to chop you up in combat. That's how bolt action Japanese work. And to this end, they have special rules that allow them to do that. So the big one is Banzai. The Japanese get army-wide fanatics. So that means you're basically fearless. If you're a 40k player, they have army-wide fearless. They can't get pinned out. They, every time they Banzai, they lose a pin marker anyway. Not that you care because you're not shooting anyone. And when they're in combat, they just fight and fight and fight and fight and fight until either they are dead or the enemies are dead. That's just, It's just very, very effective. So Banzai is a really, really strong rule. The second thing that combines really, really well with Banzai. Oh boy! Boy, oh boy, oh boy, does it combine well with Banzai. Is that you get access to... Bamboo spear fighters. Now bear in mind that the Japanese ability to Banzai means they have already wiped out basically all of the disadvantages of conscripts, right? They've basically wiped them all out. You don't care about morale, you always do as you're told, and you don't care about shooting because you're going to be chopping people up anyway, right? That would already be fantastic on like a seven point infantryman with a rifle, but the best bit about bamboo spear fighters is that they don't even get guns. They literally get bamboo spears, which means they only cost five points a dude. Now, yeah, you might say not having guns is a problem, but it's not. My Japanese infantry very, very rarely shoots anything. That's why I bring my armoured cars and my artillery and my support teams and my tanks. That's what my support things do. My infantry want to charge across the field and just chop people up as quickly as possible in close combat. And so if I don't have to pay for a gun, I'm not going to pay for a gun. Combine that with the fact that Japanese spear fighters can be taken in 15 man blocks rather than the typical like 10 or 12 other armies. And that means that you get access to 75 bamboo spear fighters in a list because you can take five squads of these guys all with 15 men in each one and that means you can get as many conscripts as the soviets and you don't even need a free squad and it doesn't even cost you that many points again because the soviets are paying seven points a man right you're only paying five points a man so it again it comes in at about 500 points it comes in at roughly 500 500 600 points to get the same as the soviets to get the same amount as men as then but yeah, their conscripts can shoot you a bit, but if you get into a fight, in a close combat fight, your infantry is going to batter the Soviet infantry nine times out of ten, because you're the Japanese. That's just how you roll. Now, the Bamboo Spear Fighters, I don't believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe they get to fight. If they got to fight, that would be absolutely insane. So you literally don't get any special rules. You just, if you get a squad in, you're going to get like 15 attacks. That's it. You still die on threes, don't get me wrong. So you're going to lose like loads of them on the way in. But you don't really care because you're just swarming the enemy as much as possible. And so it's really, really, really effective. And what's more, you can make these guys even more effective because you can take political officers like the Russians. And what your political officers do is they allow you to re-roll the dice when determining if your guys uprate from inexperienced to regular. Because that's right, bamboo spear fighters aren't just inexperienced, they're green. Which means if when one of them dies, you roll a dice and on a five or six, the rest of the squad get up rated to regular. And you can take a little like 15 point political officer and he lets you re-roll that dice. So it's just, it's so powerful. That means if you, you know, that means you get two chances to uprate every single squad. That means across your army, you should get 10 chances to upgrade from inexperienced to regular. That means a third and a third of the time that should work for you, right? Which means you have a chance of getting out of your five squads, three of them, because you get 10 chances to roll this and a third of them go off, three of them should become regular. Which means suddenly you're not even, you, you're beating the Soviets the one thing that they couldn't do, which is they can't make their infantry, you know, less likely to be, you know, green. Although I'm not sure co the commissars might let them do it, I don't know. But the point is that, the Soviets don't really have ways of getting around them if you're dying on threes, but the Japanese do. It's so good. It's so powerful. Bamboo Spear Fighters is genuinely, you know, Bamboo Spear Fighters Bam is genuinely considered to be overpowered, broken, not fun, you know, proper cheesy list. 
Red Tide isn't really considered to be like that. So it gives you a, it gives you an idea of why I think the Japanese actually in many ways can do stronger conscripts than the Soviets. But I would say they probably equal them. I would say they probably equal them. Because, yeah, the Bamboo Spear Fighters can do lots and lots of crazy stuff. But there's always going to be that time when you're doing an attacker-defender situation. And in that situation, your Bamboo Spear Fighters may not be the best unit for what you want. You might need your infantry just dug in, holding the line, ready to rock and roll. And in that situation, your Bamboo Spear Fighters might just sit there getting picked off from, into, for four turns of the game. You can't really answer the enemy's firepower because you know, you've only got a few support teams. And then the enemy gets to run off the board and do what they need to do in, let's say, like, envelopment or double envelopment, something like that. Do you know what I mean? So it can be... It, that's why I say where it's equal, because I think in a straight-up fight, just kill each other. The Soviet one is probably not as good as the Japanese one. But then when it comes to certain missions, I think the Soviet ones have got that tactical flexibility, which the Japanese infantry doesn't have. You know, Japanese bamboo spear fighters don't have as much. Although you might not care. You might just banzai them anyway. You know, best defense is attack, right, guys? So that's the other faction that I think does conscripts really, really well. And they're two major powers that, are, that take place in the bolt action sort of universe. So now let's take a look at the third and final one. And this may surprise some people. Bit of a wild card here. France. Now, to be clear here, I'm talking about France in the Battle of France, or if you want to say, you know, like the Vichy French, if you use them late war. But I'm not talking about the free French and the extra free French rules that they get. I'm talking about the French rules that you can find in France and the Allies book. Now, France, obviously, was a bit of an interesting nation when it comes to bolt action, because they were, at the start of the war, a major power, but they got knocked out really, really quickly. But they do have some interesting rules and interesting war gear options that allows them to kind of take advantage of a large army. And a lot of their special rules really show that, whilst they may not have had the most modern army, they had a massive army at the start of World War II. So... One of the rules that I'm going to talk about, it's a bit like, some people say it's a worse version of the Soviet Free Infantry Squad. I would say it might be a little worse, but in some ways it makes it a little better, so it comes out as kind of equal. You get a special rule called Hastily Conscripted Reserves, okay? And what this rule does is, if you take three inexperienced infantry sections, you get the fourth one for free. And the fourth one that is free is equal to the lowest points cost of the other inexperienced infantry sections. So, so if you take three, you know, two big infantry sections that are inexperienced, then one little five-man one, then unfortunately your your free squad will be based off that five-man one, so it won't be as good. But if you take three big maxed out infantry sections that are inexperienced, then you get a fourth one of those for free, which is really really nice. Now, the good thing about this is that the French can get access to some quite good equipment in their infantry section. So they get access to light machine guns. They get access to also something called the VB launcher, which is basically a light mortar. Every single one of your infantry squads can run around with a light mortar. And don't forget, mortars don't really care about your skill. They always just hit on a six, right? And they can zone in and stuff. So it's really cool that they get access to inexperienced infantry that can take good war gear. It's really nice. Also, their squads can be quite big. They get, I believe, it's 11 men in an infantry squad, and then you can take an extra 12th man, but he only costs four points, but he only comes with a pistol. But then if you take a light machine gun, he becomes the loader for the light machine gun. So you get, like, a, a cheaper loader. It's quite cool, actually. So it's, you see what I mean? Like, the French get, like, you know, infantry sections with loads of good gear, but then they can take them to an experience, and then if they take, so when you take three of them, they're quite cheap. So you said like, one of these inexperienced infantry sections with like a light machine, for example, only sets you about like 100 points. That's not bad at all. You take the VB launcher, it's going to set you back a little more. But it, you know, it still means that you're looking at like 100 points per infantry section, which isn't bad at all. You take three of these things, you get the fourth one for free. That actually brings the cost down really effectively. And you can go like full blue tide if you want. Because, you know, I, I call it blue tide because the French World War I uniforms are blue. And I like to imagine all of these French conscripts are being given given the old World War I uniforms. But you can go like full blue tide if you want. Because you can take five squads of infantry and then just get this free one. And they've all got decent guns. And you're looking at like about 600 points to do all that. Which is not too bad at all. The other thing that the French get access to is 
they get access to a free artillery piece. They don't have to take any other artillery pieces. They get another, they get another free unit, a free artillery piece. And I really like this because it means that if you're playing like a standard 12 dice, one platoon sort of event or game, but you're not including free units, you actually get to get 14 dice as the French, which is really nice because it means that you get to play the dice game a bit more effectively. Now, the French don't seem to get many other rules that sort of benefit their infantry. It seems to be the fact that you can out-dice most people. You can take a lot of inexperienced stuff, so you can take a huge army, and it's not a huge army of, like, little five-man units. You can get a huge army of, like, inex inexperienced machine gun teams. You can get, like, a really cheap, like, officer cadet light machine gun, which is just, like, 28 points, and it's, like, this little crappy light machine gun team, but hell, it's such a cheap dice in the bag, it's quite good. So you tend to find with the French that you get these like masses of infantry supported by lots of like little inexperienced teams, and then you've got like a couple of regular like vehicles, and you end up with quite a big army. It's quite an impressive sight to see on the board a full French or sort of blue tide style army. I'd say the French are an interesting conscript inexperienced army i don't know if i don't think they're better than the first two i think they're like the first two kind of like joint first and second and then the french come in at like a distant third and the reason i say that is you don't really have any ways of making them uprate better i'm not even sure if they can uprate i think they're just green correct me if i'm wrong down the uh, they're just inexperienced correct me if i'm wrong down the comment section below um they don't seem to get like political officers they don't seem to get anything else what really you're getting there is a free artillery piece and a free infantry section and the thing is your infantry sections get to have good gear. You do sort of somewhat offset the poor ballistic skill because you're gonna have more shots coming out of your squads because of like machine guns, and you get access to the VB launcher as well, which means that, you know, that doesn't care about ballistic skill. But I definitely would say that the French infantry like to be dug in and defending, and that's great for a lot of games, but it's gonna make things a little tricky if you need to if you need to go on the offensive, I think you might struggle. You do get inexperienced officers as well, which means you get cheap ways of boosting up your leadership. So you do get that as well. But like I say, I think the French are a good conscript army, but conscript army, but I think there are better ones. And that's all for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like and a subscribe and a comment and all that kind of good stuff. Total transparency with you guys. The reason I ask for that is any extra interactivity you can give this video gives it a big old boost on the YouTube algorithm. Every like, every comment, every subscribe, and the YouTube algorithm just loves it, picks up, starts pushing it out to more people, which obviously is a massive help for my channel. So if you have enjoyed the video, please consider doing that. If you've really enjoyed today's video, please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to my channel members and patrons that I'm able to cover more game systems like Bot Action. And I don't have to be tunnel visioned on following the big ones like Warhammer 40k. So if you want to see more Bot Action content, please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. And I just want to say a little shout out to the latest channel members and Patreon supporters of the Mordian Glory channel. So I want to say a massive thank you to Matt Kelly, Blake Chambers, Peter, Derek Butts, Diesel Fox, Montrez Inferno, Braden, Darren Prong, Diego Jimenez, Gareth, Jonathan Bond, Damian the Cadian, and Matthew Hyatt, and Baki and Lout for being channel members. I actually just want to say a massive thank you to people like Elton Eleven Tristar and August Varney and all the others that have been gifting channel membership in my live streams. If you want to become a channel member but you're not sure about paying a couple of quid to do it, then please come along to one of the live streams because more often than not, you'll be able to get a gifted membership which allows you to try it out for a month and then you can decide if you want to keep doing it yourself. So massive thank you to all those people that have been gifting memberships. It's made a huge difference and has really boosted the number of channel members and the Discord community that we've got going on as well. I also want to say a massive thank you to the latest Patreons as well. I've been doing Patreon for a long time and it is thanks to my Patreon supporters that I've been able to do loads of stuff with the Morning Glory channel and check out Bolt Action, all that kind of good stuff. So massive thank you to all of my latest Patreon supporters. So thank you to Gareth Vader, Andrew, Papa Vosler, Peter Leonard, Cameron Lincoln, Jiminy Crecken, Nicholas Lewis, and Alexi Menzer. Massive thank you, guys. I really appreciate all of your Patreon support. Now, before we go, I want to say a personal, heartfelt thank you to all of my top-tier Patreon supporters. These are the guys that are subscribed at the War Master level. And the generosity that these guys show is just, it's mind-blowing. It's absolutely 
incredible. I wish I had, I wish I knew more words to ex to express it. I often do this kind of thank you a little bit unscripted off the cuff because I want it to come across as a bit more genuine. But like, honestly, the support that my top tier patrons have shown me is just, it's incredible. So I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier war masters. So massive thank you to Navy Veteran, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Ross Miller, Tom Sutton, and August Varney. Massive thank you, guys. I hope you know how much your support means to me because it's, it's life-changing, tr truly. So massive thank you to every single one of those boys. 07 down in the comment section for every single one of those boys. But that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.